Hello guys, we are back with our next lecture. In this lecture, let us go through the concept of code migration. So from the name itself, you can say guys, so it is nothing but moving code from one spot to another. Okay, so your question will be, okay, so why do we need to do this code migration? Okay, so the reasons are nothing but improve com computing performance by moving process from heavily loaded machine to lightly loaded machine. So assume that you hosted your website in two different servers, okay and you wrote a code that whenever there is a load on one server so even though the request is a nearer or the response could be faster you are forcing the request to go to the second server means here you are balancing the load so that kind of things can be done here guys similarly improve communication time between the ship shipping a code to system code where large data sets are residing Okay, so basically even this for this application also you can use it. So if you draw a small diagram, it will be in this way guys. So here we are having client and here we are having server. Okay, this is our network. Okay, so initially the, curve, uh, the client feedback code, here we are having this client and server communication. Here they are kind of communicating and this is nothing but a code, code repository. So here is the code. So here we are fetching it and we are passing it to the server or we are exchanging in between the server and client. Okay. So I hope everyone got some basic idea about this code migration. Okay. So client first fetches the necessary software and invokes the server. So the same explanation for the diagram. Okay. Similarly, migrating models. So we are having a few migrating models guys. So those are nothing but. So each and everything contains three segments. That is nothing but code segment, resource segment and execution segment. Okay. Okay. So code segment is nothing but where the exact code is there and resource segment is nothing but where the resources like variables and all those things will be stored and execution segment is nothing but where the final executable file will be stored. Okay. Okay. So these things can also be migrated based on your requirement. Okay. So again migration can be divided into two types. So that is nothing but weak migration and strong migration. So weak migration. So in weak migration we will be migrating only the code guys because that is the main thing right. So that is only transferred then we will be calling it as weak migration. Similarly, strong migration. So along with the code, with the execute, execution segments are transferred, then we can say that those is nothing but strong migration. Okay. Okay. And migration can be initiated by both the sender and receiver also. So basically the server or the sender can also initiate it and the receiver that is nothing but the client can also initiate it. So sender initiated means uploading the code to the server and receiver initiated means downloading the code from the server. Okay. So as he is sending, he'll be uploading and he is receiving. So he's downloading. So in that way it will be working guys. So I hope everyone got some basic idea about the code migration concept. So in the next lecture we will be giving the, I will be giving you an introduction about the communication. And after that we will be discussing about RPC in detail guys. Okay. So let us meet in the next lecture. Thank you. Thanks for watching.